What up, Niner fam? My name is JT Magnum. Welcome to Niner News. The Niners lost again yesterday. Uh, we go to one and four, and the offense was the one who played their hearts out this time, although there was some, some stuff that I'll get into in just a minute at the beginning of the game that I was aggravated about a little bit. But the defense decided not to show this week, and, and I don't think it's their fault. I think... It has to do with something else, and I'll explain that. But the Giants won 30 to 27. Eli Manning passed for like a billion yards and had like over 40 completions, which was the Giants' record, and most of them being to freaking Shane Vereen. And the last one, of course, to Larry Donnell, who made a crazy, unbelievably lucky catch in the end zone that the 49ers had two guys there and couldn't get the ball out of his hand when it was just sitting there in his hand like this. And he's holding it here. I don't know how they didn't punch it out or just anything. Even when he got to the ground, they could have hit it out, and it would have been a, it would have not been a catch because he has to stay with it in his hand until he comes down. But unfortunately, they couldn't get that ball out of his hand. Anyways, the 49ers get beat by the Giants again, and I'm gonna get right into one thing real quick. Um, there were several holding calls missed on the Giants yesterday, and it was aggravating the living daylights out of me. Um, it seemed like the 49ers couldn't get a pass rush, but I think the reason was because the Giants were holding a lot. It was like a wrestling match out there for them yesterday. They did get called for some, but one in particular, two in particular, one led to a scoring play, and that was on Corey Lemonye, actually. Corey Lemonye got loose, and he was held, and you can see him get yanked. His body went back like this, basically. His body flew backwards. And, and he was trying to keep going. And you could see Jim Tom Sula saying, you know, it's a hold. It's a hold. And it, it just got frustrating to watch because there was a lot of plays where I saw holding. The the main, main one, though, in particular, the big catch, the 22-yard Shane Vereen catch that set the Giants up in, in basically good field position to score the, in the last play. And now, now, mind you, I don't know if they still would have won. I don't know if the Flyers would have still stopped them. But all I'm saying is that would have gave them a chance. It was a blatant hold. Um, the Giants, and, and on top of that, the guy leaked out before the pass was thrown. So he was illegally downfield, the offensive lineman. So <laughs> that there's two plays in one right there where they should have been called. Uh, Manning also threw a ball on the ground that should have been intentional ground. They said Shane Vereen was in the vicinity. He was nowhere near the vicinity of the area. Should have been intentional grounding. There was just some plays yesterday, but that hold, and I and I have it right there. Uh, oh, sorry, I have it right there. It's going to be playing right here on the screen. So just, you know, you can you can view it there if you'd like, and you can tell me what you think. But it was a blatant hold, and on top of that, he he let out before the ball got there. Should have been a legal, illegal man downfield, and it's just... It's just why? Why can't we get why can't we get calls? Just why? Why can't we get calls ever? It just seems like we can never benefit from any calls. The refs just never give them to us. It just it just it's like four years of this now, and I blame Jim Harbaugh. I still I blame Jim Harbaugh. He used to be the pain in the butt to the refs, and it just seems like we just can't ever get calls because of it. And it's just it's just frustrating. But anyways, moving on. The offense played well. Colin Kaepernick actually looked good under on, on, poised there. I got pissed because at the beginning of the game, they opened with that stupid three tight end, one wide receiver set that I hate. It's like they don't understand that. Get out of that set. They still got to get out of that set. I don't know why they run that. It's a good goal line play because it's easier to be in the goal line with that kind of set with three big tight ends and a, and a running back, and you don't know if you're going to run or pass to the tight ends. That's great. But when it comes to, like, at the beginning of the game, like, Get out of that set. You got to open up with two wide receivers or three wide receivers. And you know what I mean? Or open up in a basic set that gets that, that, that they don't know what you're going to do, whether you're going to pass or run. And it gives Carlos Hyde some space. And they finally did that as well. Later on, they did that. But they kept running Carlos Hyde to that three tight end set. They got to start running them on plays where there's three wide receivers or, you know, spread formation where they have four wide receivers out and he can run, you know, on that kind of formation. Like they got to start doing that. I don't know why they don't do that, but they won't spread the giants out or they won't spread teams out in general, but all in all, they still did play well in offense enough to score 27 points in the giants who I don't think it can play that great of defense. in, in the first place, they weren't good against the pass to begin with, but the Niners were able to capitalize. Captain did look good yesterday. So hats off to them for playing a good game offensively, but let's get into the defense. Uh, the defense played great, I thought. I thought the defense played great for the plays they were given. And and that's what I mean by that. Eric Mangini called a crap game. 
They played a conservative defense the whole day. Shane Vereen was allowed to just roam free all throughout the underneath everywhere and get short passes. It just seemed like they were dinking and dunking every time. It was like a slant or a dink and dunk or a slant or a comeback. Slant or a comeback or Shane Vereen leaking out or Rashad Jennings leaking out. It was every time it was getting so annoying and the Niners made no adjustments. It was like they were content with them being in front of them and then trying to stiffen up in the goal line area and it didn't work. It backfired. And and I don't know why they did that. I don't know why Mangini thought that that he could do that. But you got talented corners. You got some guys that can defend a little bit. I know it's Odell Beckham out there, but double team him or something and let the other guy try to beat you and play him one on one or something. But it just one after one after one after one after pass after pass of single little thing. It was it was like a three yard pass, four yard pass, three yard pass, four yard pass, three yard pass, four yard pass, five yard pass. It was one after the other, and then it was somewhere it was just wide open underneath because he was playing the soft zone coverage. You can't do that. You can't do that against a guy who can pass the ball like that and has that weapons. You can't do that. You gotta blitz him. You gotta attack him. You gotta show some balls. And they didn't do that yesterday. And and that and that and that's ultimately what came back to haunt them in the end. So. Hats off to the Giants for taking what the Niners gave them and being able to take out the victory. But like I said, it's kind of sucked at the end that 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 hold wasn't called. It would have gave the Niners a better chance at winning. And it sucked that Tremaine Brock couldn't hold on to that interception at the at the end when he, you know, all he had to do was catch it with his hands. He, he unfortunately let it go through and it hit the ground. But that's just our season right now so far. So moving on, we're going to play the Baltimore Ravens at home at Levi Stadium. Hopefully we get a nice victory there. I'm hoping Jim Harbaugh is there to support his brother and hopefully see him lose. I hope the 49ers can beat them with both of them there. That'd be actually really cool. I li- I'd like to beat the Ravens. It's been a while since we beat them. They beat us in the, in the Super Bowl. They beat us the year before that. And they beat us the year after that. So... I would like to beat the Ravens. That'd be nice to beat them and go two and four at least and then try to open up some division games because right now the Niners are struggling and they need us to win. They can still do well. I mean, Seattle's two and three. The Rams are two and three. Arizona's four and one. I think Arizona has benefited off some easy, easy scheduling and some people being injured. They get to play Pittsburgh without Ben Roethlisberger. It's like one after the other. They just always get lucky and get somehow scheduled these games so perfectly where teams are hurt or somebody's not there now or it's always something with Arizona. It always seems like, I know I sound like a whiny baby, but at the same time, it's like, how do they get so lucky that they get to face people without their main players? Like all the time it happened all last year and 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 then they, they were able to eke out victories that way it's like oh team is just so lucky i want i want some of that luck like why can't we play why couldn't we face uh the pittsburgh steals with michael vick he can't pass the ball like ben roethlisberger why couldn't we face him but oh well anyways to each his own and and we got to play the games that we have in front of us and see who and sue see who we can beat so hopefully this week it's beat the ravens all right so let me know in the comment section what you thought about the game let me know what you think about the upcoming game against the ravens and yeah we'll see what happens all right so for jt magnum nine news i'm out peace y'all